Hi, welcome to day six of our seven day photo editing challenge here on Digital Photo Mentor. We're going to do something a little bit different today and then I'm going to start working in Lightroom and then hop over to Luminar and show you how to use it as a plugin. And the project we're working on today is texture overlays. So let's get to it. If you've been following along all week on the challenge, you will probably recognize some of these images. These are the ones we've worked on through day one through five. And the next one we're going to work on is this image here of the flower. Let me just zoom up my thumbnails. And as you can see, we are in Lightroom today. So this is the image we're going to be working with here, this flower. Okay, so that's the original unedited version and there, we're going to be applying a texture to make it look something like that okay, in various different variations. Now, if you don't have any texture images that you can play with, don't worry, I'm gonna give you these five. So these are some images that I shot in Cuba of some old peeling paint and crumbling concrete and things like that. So it's actually pretty easy to make your own textures. So if you don't have any, you can download these. It'll come with the download that you get today for your raw files and you can use these for now, but it's really easy to make your own. And eventually I'm going to have some texture packs available for you to purchase if you want to get some of mine. And these are all going to be from Cuba. So the first pack I have available will all be things that I photographed in Cuba. So there's tons and tons of texture there. So the first thing I'm going to do is develop this image as I would normally in Lightroom. So let's go to the develop module. So I'm just hitting my keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to use D to get there. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing that I did in Luminar early in the week, just to adjust the color and the contrast. If you are working in Luminar, go ahead and do your basic edits first, okay, and the light panel and so on. The first thing I'm doing, if you're working in Lightroom, is I'm using this little panel up at the top here called Profile. So it comes loaded with an Adobe Profile, but I want to use one of the camera ones. So I'm going to go with Provia because this was shot on a Fuji camera. Okay. So if you're opening this in Lightroom, you should see those options. And let's just do the same little trick with the white slider. So I'm holding the Alt Option key and the black slider to give it a little bit more contrast. Okay. I could increase the exposure a bit, now it's a little bit dark, and maybe give it just a bit of clarity. So a few sliders later and it looks pretty good. Let's see the before and after. Great, so I'm just punching up the, co the contrast a little bit. The color looks pretty good. Um, maybe I'll just tone down a little bit less yellow. And the only other thing I'm going to do is add a little edge vignette. Do my little trick, turn it down, turn down the feather. Now remember, if you're working in Luminar, you can adjust the position and the placement of the uh, vignette, and you can put it off center. If you're working in Lightroom, you cannot. So if you wanted to put it off center, you have to go use a radial filter in this case. All right, so let's do something in that neighborhood. That looks pretty good. Let's check the before and after of that. So I just want to darken the edges a little bit because when I apply the texture, how I apply the texture, um, what's in the background is going to affect how the texture applies, if that makes sense. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. Okay, so that's all I'm really gonna do here in Lightroom because I'm going to be funking this image up quite a bit and it's not really gonna look like this when we're finished. So there's a couple of different ways. If you're working with uh, Luminar as a plugin for Lightroom, there's a couple of different ways you can get there. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is right click on your image and you can choose a couple of options. You can choose edit in and then find Luminar 4. Now, as you can see, I have several different plugins and I have several different versions of Luminar. So if you have the newest Luminar, use, use Luminar 4. If you have Flex or Luminar 3, the texture overlay tool is, is part of those as well. So you can follow along if you have an older version of Luminar. Okay, this is something that you cannot do in Lightroom because it requires a layer. And Lightroom does not work with layers or combining images. So you cannot do it in Lightroom. If you don't have Luminar, 
um, recommend downloading the trial version of Luminar 4 and then you can you can try this out um, or you can use Photoshop or Photoshop Elements or On One, anything that uses layers, okay? So you can get to it from Edit Luminar 4, Edit In, and what that will do is it will create a second file, usually a TIFF, depends on what you have set up in your preferences. I have mine set to uh, make a TIFF. Okay. with the Lightroom adjustments that I just did apply to that image. So it's going to make a new file as a TIFF with the adju adjustments so it looks like what I see on my screen and open that version in Luminar. Okay. The other way to get to Luminar is to go again right click and choose export. Okay. Now export gives you some different options. So I'm looking at Luminar 4 right here. So you can see it gives me a choice of edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments which is what we just talked about, or open source files. Okay, so if I say open source file, it's actually gonna open the original raw file and work with that in Luminar. It will not create a second copy and it will not apply the Lightroom edits, okay? So I want to apply the Lightroom edits that I just did, so I'm gonna choose that one. And edit in will give me the same, the same thing. So it takes a moment to create the TIFF and open the file in Luminar. So um, I'll be right back, grab a beverage, and we'll hop over to Luminar in a second. All right, so here we are in Luminar 4. And if you've been working with Luminar 4, this will look familiar. Down the bottom, we've got the looks. And up at the top are all your tools. Over on the right are your filters. So we're only going to be concerned about one particular filter and I'm just going to turn off these looks because we don't need to see them. And you'll notice that something else is different. Up at the top there is no export button. So the export button is usually right there and that doesn't exist when you're using it as a plugin. You'll see over here on the left there it says cancel and apply. So that's what you're going to do when you're finished here. So once you hit apply it will apply what you've done in Luminar to that new image and re-import it back into Lightroom. So when we're done, I'll show you how that works. So remember, we're only concerned with one, maybe two filters in Luminar this time. And that is over in the creative panel on the right and the texture overlay. So open that tool up. And the first thing that you have to do to get started is to load the texture. Okay, now the five that I'm going to give you uh, looks like this. Okay, so there's sort of an old barn painting, um, painting, paint, peeling paint look, and I made it into black and white so we can apply that. There's another one with some peeling paint and texture. There's another one with sort of a crackled concrete. There's some paint drips. And then finally, the old like barn door look. So I'm going to try a couple of different ones. I'm going to do um, this one first. Actually, let's do this one. Okay, so this is the black and white one. So once it applies, you'll see something like this. Okay, so your defaults on this tool are set to 50% opacity here. So the tool is at 50%. And the blend mode you'll see right here in this little pull down is set to normal. Okay, so what that means is that if I dial the opacity up of this layer, okay, so opacity is like the amount of translucence of the layer. If I dial this up to 100%, what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to give you a second to think about it. Okay, now watch what happens when I do that. Okay, it makes the texture 100% opaque, meaning we can't see any of the image underneath. So that's not what we want. Okay, double click sets that back to the default, which is 50. Okay. So there's another way we can dial it down if we don't like that much texture, right? And that's actually not too bad, right? So if you're happy with that, you can mask out a few bits and then call it done. Or you, the other way you could do it is through the blend modes. So we played a little bit with blend modes in the last one where we're doing the landscape and applying the, the sky and the reflection. And this one, we're going to play with uh, probably the overlay mode as well. Okay, that's the one that kind of works the best for textures. So I'm just going to scroll through these and see what they look like. No, those are not working. Sometimes lighten works really well. If you have a dark image with a light texture, it can work well. Okay, overlay looks pretty good. Soft light, okay, not as much texture showing. And hard light, hard light's nice as well. It gives a little bit more texture and a lot of contrast. So let's try that one. 
Uh, we can actually turn the brightness up a little bit, okay, on the texture, and maybe we want a little bit less contrast and a little bit less saturation. So something like that. Now, if you have an image like this where you've got a subject and you don't want the texture applying in certain areas, you have the option of masking again, okay? So I'll show you that in a second. The other thing that you can do is flip the texture, okay? So you can flip it left to right, like this, or up and down. And just play around with how it's positioned to see what it looks the best on this particular image. I kind of like, uh, I kind of like that. I like this sort of blobby paint thing there and I like the texture that's happening up there and a little bit what's happening down here. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the mask. Okay, so same as we did before, click mask and I'm gonna go brush. And remember, I'm going to erase because I want it to apply to most of the image and I'm just gonna take it away from a couple of areas. So I'm gonna use a slightly bigger brush. Maybe I'll turn the softness down just a little bit and make sure my opacity is lowered. I'm at 34%. So I just wanna remove it very, very subtly from a couple of images may, or a couple of sections, maybe up here on the flower petal, something like that. Just have the flower petal show through a little bit better. And maybe a little bit right here. Okay, so you get to decide which parts you want not to be textured. Okay, so I want this white part to be nice and smooth. And if you decide you want it back, just switch to paint and you can put it back. That easy, all right? I actually like the texture applying everywhere here. There's nothing really objectionable, but if you're applying this to a portrait, um, a texture overlay looks look great on sort of antique portraits. You don't usually want it over somebody's face, so you definitely want to mask it off their face. So. Pretty easily, we've just added a texture just like that. Okay. I'm gonna do one final step and then we're gonna go back to Lightroom. Uh, let's actually change the texture and see what other ones look good. Let's try the barn. So sometimes it takes, the big, the biggest amount of time is spent playing around and looking for the right texture on the, on the image that you have. So the barn looks good. I'm gonna flip it. Oh, that looks better. So there's a thing at the bottom here I don't like when it's flipped that way. There's kind of a wooden thing across the bottom. So I don't like that. And it doesn't look very good upside down. So that's how I like it there. And this one, I'm actually gonna give more contrast. So let's see how that goes. And I'm gonna darken it, so make it really contrasty. So we're gonna go the opposite we did the other one. And I'm gonna do something else. I'm going to increase the opacity a little bit. Let's have a lot of texture. And I'm gonna zoom it in, because I don't like this little gap here. So I'm gonna see if I can get rid of it by zooming it in. Yes, I can, look at that. And now it's gone, that looks good. And I'm changing my mind about the brightness. Excellent, all right. So just play around with it until you're happy with the, the look. And let's double check again if there's anything I want to mask. And now with this different texture, I wanna get rid of this sort of the stripe on here. So I'm gonna zoom in just a tiny little bit. I'm going to erase 34%, okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna erase just these lines right here. I don't want the line showing on there. Just like that. Let's see if there's anything else that doesn't look good. You know, there's lots of lines sort of going through the flowers this way. Eh, not crazy about that. Maybe just go with a little smaller brush. I wanna get rid of these so I can see the flower tips a little bit whiter. And let's just move around over here maybe this little area as well. So just double check that there's anything that you don't want the texture applying again. The rest looks pretty good. Let's go back to fit on screen and apply it. So I'm not being really critical here just for the sake of demonstration. I'm kind of going pretty quick and dirty. So I would recommend, you know, checking your image, zoom in to 100%, go a little bit closer. There's some areas over here that I would probably do a little better job on if I spend more time on it, right? The next one I'm going to do is a final thing in 
Luminar before we go back to Lightroom is apply what's called a color style or a LUT. If you're wondering what the heck is a LUT, it's called a lookup table and it is just a set of um, instructions that it the, is given to the program to apply like a color style. It's kind of like think cinematic grading, movie posters, things like that. Okay, so there's a bunch that come preloaded with Luminar and if you just choose click choose LUT and if you scroll through them just hold your mouse over it you'll see it change on the screen okay, so that one's kinda cool Bakersfield so just go through and see what kind of look you want to apply here and it's gonna give a color style right so let's go with Bakersfield in the essence of time and you can turn it up if you want it appearing stronger or turn it down if you're not happy with it you can pick a different one let's maybe go with the sepia okay so that fits with our barn door so it's kind of more of a rustic feeling let's turn it up a little bit more okay and that looks good All right the other thing I could do is if I want to apply a vignette in here now I applied the vignette in Lightroom um, I probably should have applied it in Luminar after I did the texture because I can't really tell where it's gonna go in hindsight Okay, so I might want to go back and do that again, or I might want to just brighten up the shadows a little bit because it's gotten a little on the dark side. Okay. You could also apply a matte look, which is kind of this black and white, faded, old. We're trying to go for that old look, right? So let's see what that does. That's not so bad. I kind of like that. All right, so it looks like the flower was actually photographed with this piece of wood or painted together. So now that we're happy with the image in Luminar, we're just going to go up to the top here and hit apply. And it's going to save the image. You see that it says processing here at the top. It's going to save the image with all the edits that we did in Luminar applied to the new file and bring it back into Lightroom. So once that is there, I will go and look for it. Okay, so you see that it said updating, so it's that quick. Oh, there's even a ding. I don't know if you heard that or not. Okay, now what happens is it just popped down the bottom. Okay, so I hear this a lot um, from people that are doing this type of thing or working with a plugin that my image disappeared or it didn't come back into Lightroom because your image is here and the new one is down there. So if you have lost it, just go down to the bottom in Lightroom and if you don't see this panel down here, just hit the T key on your keyboard for, um, I can't even think of the word, <laughs> and, uh, this little tablet bar at the bottom for lack of a better word, I can't think of the word. So this will appear and you can choose how to sort them. Sort by file name and find your flowers. There they are. So now there's our image. Okay, so this is the one that was edited in Luminar. Let's look at the file name. Okay, so you can even see it says Luminar 4 edit. Right, so this is a TIFF and that is what has been applied in Luminar. Okay, so there's the original. There's one I did earlier and there's the one I just did. So you can see the same texture uh, applied slightly differently. You can get a completely different look. So what I encourage you to do with this flower image and the texture overlays is play around a little bit. And something else I didn't do when we were in Luminar is layer the textures. So if you want to apply one texture and then you want to apply a second one on top, all you have to do is add an adjustment layer in Luminar and add another texture filter on top. Okay, so doing it this way as opposed to doing your edit solely in Luminar means that you can't edit it back in Luminar later and have all the adjustments still there flexible. The sliders are all gone, right? So if you want to be able to play with it and go back later and play with it again in terms of the texture, then do the work entirely inside of Luminar. Right? If you want to keep it inside of Lightroom because that's where your catalog is, just keep in mind that you can only go there once and come back and if you want to change it, you got to do it again.
So I hope you have fun with this image. Texture overlays can be um, really interesting and fascinating to work on uh, abstract images. So pick a few of your own as well and give this a go. We'll be back tomorrow with the last day, day seven. Um, we're going to be talking about a night photography image and how to pull out details out of a dark image like that. Take care and we'll see you tomorrow.